There has been multiple reports about the Apple XR headset supposedly arriving this year, but from a new report from Bloomberg, it could be actually a new delay bringing this headset to us in 2023. The reasons, software and overeating. Let's see though why this is actually a good thing. Let's get into it. From some of these headsets is considered to be the next generation of VR, the one that is going to bring VR to the mainstream and stuff like that. And for that, we have to calm down a bit. Listen, I'm not a super fan of Apple. I'm not part of the cult, but even a, a narrative like me could understand and see that when they do something, they do it very well, bringing a lot of attention to small details. And it's something that we really need in a VR ecosystem where everyone is trying something new and nothing really sticks in the right way. Well, we have the Oculus Quest 2, Meta Quest 2 right now that is going like crazy after these holidays. And that's a great thing. But the headset is still bulky, battery life is like a man. And so for many people, it's still not time to actually jump in and they might need something more. That's why Apple is working on it. By the way, I'm gonna describe a bit right now all the rumors about the Apple XR headset. If you know already about it, well, I'm gonna leave uh, timestamps over here so you can jump there and talk about the overeating issues. But maybe you might discover something that you didn't hear before. Well, first of all, here we're talking about two 8K display, probably micro OLED, and that is an absolute insane amount of pixels ran by this headset. Apparently they figure out a way to have a foveal rendering, doing everything for them, keeping this very high resolution to get rid, of course, of the screen door effect. Let's remember that already with 4K displays, seeing the screen door effect is very hard indeed. And to have all these technologies, of course, in cameras. And that's where it gets even crazier because this Apple headset is supposed to have over 12 cameras for motion tracking and stuff like it. And that's why one of the problems that they have is actually a software part to actually manage all these cameras. It's supposed to have a sleek design and be focused mostly on media and uh, entertainment and not really on uh, gaming or the metaverse. That he actually said something that they don't wanna push on at all. And I really agree with it. Look, Apple, we're becoming friends. Another thing that is a bit less interesting, though, is the price. From the different rumors, we expect to have a price of $3,000. 3000 Ouch. Anyway, this is going to be a VR headset with also some AR capabilities, thanks to all these cameras that, of course, are going to need to do something over there. Probably also face tracking, eye tracking, and every tracking possible in the world. But let's go back on track, because there's a reason why the overeating part is actually kind of a good sign of what they're trying to do with this headset. So first of all, from the rumors, this is gonna be a standalone headset. And the particular thing with a standalone headset is gonna have an internal processor. And Apple makes uh, one of the best internal processors available on the market right now, and that's the M1 Pro chipset. And apparently we're gonna have a, even a better version on this device. So why these overheating things become suddenly a positive thing? Well, because it means that they're actually trying to push this chipset as much as possible. Also, the overheating problem could come though from the screens as well, because a very high resolution demands more power, of course. But if you're talking about the chipset, it means that they're trying to push as much performance possible. And when we compare the M1 chipset, for example, with the 855, where the XR2 is based for the Oculus Quest 2, well, there's no competition over there. The M1 already wins three times over in every single benchmark compared to the XR2. They will mean a minimum with an older chip, so three times better graphics and three times better games than the one that we can have right now in a mobile device. And that's absolutely fantastic. Now, is it gonna have controllers? We don't know. Is it gonna be used for gaming? Well, doesn't seem like from the beginning. And $3,000 is a big price to actually pay for it. But with a screen like that 
and with a processor like that everything seems to be super interesting indeed and we know how much developers are actually important in the apple ecosystem so bringing new games will be something that is going to happen very very soon with the way of interaction that we're going to have over there so apparently there's some problem with the software that is going to be called ROS. so reality OS that's super interesting indeed and with the cameras for the tracking of everything the different movements and of course for the overeating that we have on the device itself and that's why Bloomberg is saying that the device will be delayed to 2023. Now it was supposed to be unveiled in June this year. Now we don't know if this will still happen so they're gonna show it up and then just say it's gonna be available Q1 or Q2 2023 or they're gonna wait for it just next year. From the competition we have an Oculus Quest 2 that is still selling, MetaQuest 2 that is still selling a lot and Project Cambria is gonna arrive later this year so it's gonna be a bit of a competition but let's remember that Project Cambria will be probably just a third or a quarter of a price of this Apple headset so is there really a competition Probably not. So I'm gonna keep you updated if anything happened, if we know something more about this headset that is unveiling. But what I wanna know from you is if you're really interested in a headset like that. Are you part of the Apple ecosystem? Would you, are you willing to spend $3,000 for a VR headset if it's very good in quality, is small, is portable, and there's a big support behind it? Or you're just, wait, that's too much. I can get with the $300 in MetaQuest 2 and have fun with friends and everything, or buy 10 MetaQuest 2. Anyway, let me know in the comment below. I'm gonna be forced to buy that thing. I know it, and it's gonna be expensive. But hey, in case that's on you. Anyway, let me know what you think about it in the comment below. Are you still interested in that? Do you think that it's a good thing that they're actually overeating and trying to squeeze as much as possible from this headset? Or maybe it's just a, come on, just clock it down and uh, let's make it happen. Let me know in the comment below. And as always, guys, if you liked the video, like, if you didn't like the video, just like, subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. Love the channel, there's a join button there. Don't turn on further, also the Patreon. Thanks for all the Patreons and who join the channel, of course. And uh, that's it, see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.